Okay. Thanks for joining again, everybody. Today, as you heard, we have Tom Fitzgerald with us. Today's uh, the title of today's session is File, Hide, and Seek Autodesk Vault Searching Best Practices. So thanks for joining. Uh, because this session is a little bit more about data management, I wanted to share with you this course that Tom made. It's a five-part course on streamlining your engineering data management. So you can check that out. It's a free course. It's five sessions, uh, really insightful, and it's hosted by Tom. So you'll, you'll recognize the face. Um, I also wanted to invite you to our upcoming Manufacturing Innovation Series or a Manu Manufacturing Leaders Exchange. I'm going to drop the link here. We have a few vir virtual events for, th for this, and this is just an opportunity for leaders to come together and discuss the current state of the market. Um, you can bring uh, your strengths, your weaknesses, anything that you want to discuss, and kind of the trajectory of where we're all headed. So you can scan the QR code here and register, and if you're in the San Jose area, we have a session that's going to be live in San Jose in April. So be sure to check all these out. We have a ton of resources for you on our site. And again, we're so happy that you're here and you're taking advantage of this resource. So if this is your first KVA, welcome. And if you are a returning learner, welcome back. We, If you're not already partnered with us, we would love to help you digitally transform your manufacturing business and take advantage of the softwares that we're using in today's session. So don't hesitate to reach out. Tom will have some contact info at the end of our session, or you can always email marketing at kativ.com. And after the session, please fill out our survey. Let us know what topics you'd like to see. Let us know what you liked and what you didn't like, and we can make KVA better. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you again for joining. And we'll Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's KVA. Um, my name is Tom Fitzgerald. Today, we're going to be talking about some features inside of Autodesk Vault, uh, particularly around being able to search and find the information um, that you might need, okay? So um, you all know me, uh, my name is Tom Fitzgerald, Senior Technical Solutions Executive here at Katib. I've been with Katib for about two years. Previous to that, I was at Autodesk for about 10 years, uh, uh, serving a role as a solution architect, uh, implementation consultant. So a lot of experience working with not only the manufacturing tools like Inventor Fusion 360, um, but also Autodesk Vault and being able to work with a data management application like Vault. Um, I've been working within the 3D design industry for 25 plus years, also supporting the manufacturing industry for well over 30 years in various roles. Um, I'm also a U.S. Army veteran and in my free time, I am a World War II historian. So enough about me. Let's talk today about Autodesk Vault. So we're, we want to focus really on primary these three primary um, areas within Autodesk Vault, um, really around reusability, um, what we can do around incorporating different property information inside of Vault, as well as obviously, you know, what we're all here for is how to use that search capability inside of the vault most effectively. Okay. So um, before we get into all that, just want to reinforce the fact that here at Kativ, uh, we focus on many different elements around manufacturing. Um, really, we're focusing on supporting manufacturers and customers around how they can secure their IP how they can store all their relative information around their particular business. Um, we focus a lot in areas around sales automation and configuration, as well as design and CAD automation. Um, but you'll notice at the root of all that, you know, we have this common thread of data management. And it's really important for us as a company that supports you as manufacturing customers to understand the benefits of a data management application, how important it is to secure your information and be able to use your inf information most effectively. So this is why we focus here on so many different elements, um, not only from you know, our, our partners at Autodesk, but also you know, our other partners at Tacton, as well as ANSYS, to be able to really support you as an, a manufacturing customer in all your different needs and endeavors, particularly around these technologies, okay? So 
Autodesk Vault um, is very important um, because of the fact that it allows us to be able to upload information and be able to utilize that information in a very streamlined way. It's a very user-friendly way. So one of the biggest focuses around being able to store your information in a centralized location and to be able to find and retrieve it is particularly around reusability, okay? Um, uh, different um, 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 different um, tests, different analysis, different reports out there from many different companies have come to understand that a lot of companies spend anywhere from 10 to 20% of their time just trying to find information in order to make educated uh, decisions. Um, there's also uh, a way for um, you know, companies to really benefit and utilize that inf information more effectively by, you know, minimizing the amount of time trying to find that information by implementing a solution like Autodesk Vault. Um, if you can't find information that you need in a timely fashion, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that have come to the conclusion of, well, if I can't find what I need, sometimes it's just easier for me to just create something from scratch, or in this case, recreate something um, in order to satisfy that particular need. So companies and individuals are spending time not being able to find what they need when they need it. And as a result of that, having to recreate some information. So this creates a, an environment of replication and duplication um, that isn't really necessary simply because you can't remember where something might be stored or the individual that may have created some information isn't available for you to be able to um, ask that person or that individual a question as to where some information might be. Um, going along these lines of the, the fact of not being able to find information, having to recreate that information, creating this, this element of duplication within your environment, because you have so many different people trying to create information and use information, it also creates a, a, a situation of non-standardization where you have so many individuals doing things their own particular way because of the fact that they can't rely upon reusing information. So if there was information already out there, somebody was able to find it, they wouldn't have to recreate something. Um, thus creating a, a situation of non-standardization. Um, being able to search and find information um, really takes away that, that tribal knowledge component, having to rely on your memory or other people's memory in order to realize where something might reside. So it's important to really focus on using a system like Vault so that way you can get away from um, having to recreate information. You're able to then start reusing more of your information that you've created, uh, engineering, design, administrative information, whatever that, that information might be, okay? So from a, from a sense of utilizing a tool like Vault, being able to find what you need in a timely fashion and understanding that that information is exactly what you need or accurate to some degree, you know, that lends itself to being able to reuse that information. Okay. Uh, another thing that I want to touch on before we get into the Vault environment specifically and start looking at some of that search capability is, is really understanding more around properties. And this is really important because a lot of the capabilities and strengths of Vault really depend upon property information. Okay. And if I go over here to my, my instance of Vault, what I'm talking about specifically is if I go and I you know, peruse through a folder structure here and, and I select on a component or some file that's existing inside of my Vault environment, over here on the right-hand side, I have this properties panel. And if your properties panel isn't turned on, you can turn it on. Um, you can turn on the preview pane and the shortcuts pane and, and the view properties grid right here. So if it's not turned on, just go to your view dropdown and you can turn it on there. And you're going to see your properties panel here on the right-hand side. Inside the Vault, we have a number of system properties. These are properties that Vault absolutely positively needs to have uh, implemented within its environment in order to function appropriately, to provide that benefit and those strengths to you as, as a user. 
So system properties, always there. You can't delete them. You can't rename them. Obviously, the values that go into the properties are entirely up to you. Some of those uh, values are being tracked and managed and monitored by Vault itself. However, you can have uh, many different user defined properties. So these user defined properties are essentially custom properties that you as a user, you as a company need in order to facilitate some sort of process, right? Um, who created the file? Uh, what is the company name? Is there a cost associated to it? What is the description of this file? All of these things are variables um, in regards to the information around your files. Some other very important properties that we sometimes take for granted is this revision property. I mean, I've seen it a hundred times. I'm sure you guys have seen it as well, where um, you name a file a particular, you give it a particular file name. Um, maybe it's a smart, a smart numbering system. Maybe there's some descriptive information within that file name. But in a lot of cases, you want to be able to manage your revisions as well. So I've seen plenty of times where uh, customers will include a rev and either an alphanumeric character representative of that revision number or letter. And then, of course, if you revise that file, then you have to make those changes file. And then you have to make a copy of that file and then give that file a new file name. So uh, from a very manual perspective, you're now managing versions and revisions in order to satisfy a file name. And a lot of cases, that's simply because of what we're left with when we're not using systems like Autodesk Vault, where we don't have all this property information that we can rely upon. So um, if you're using Windows Explorer, if you're using some other system that doesn't have property information, you know, it's a challenge sometimes to be able to create an effective and efficient file structure and, and architecture to be able to find the information you need. So relying upon property information, primarily um, custom property information or user-defined property information is going to be extremely important and beneficial for you as a company to be able to find the information you need inside of the vault with a high level of confidence that it's accurate information. So that way you can make you know, very important business decisions without having to recreate information. So you're creating an environment of reusability. Okay, so that's properties. Um, it allows for better naming conventions, as I stated, right? It gives you a, a, a means of being able to use a more rudimentary or standard naming convention for your files, where now you can then rely upon the properties to be that delineation or that variation of being able to identify your files, okay? Um, properties within our files are nothing more than file characteristics, those things that kind of make up and define that picture of what that file is all about. You know, is it for this customer or that customer? Is there a cost associated? So as you saw when I was showing Vault there, you know, there's a lot of different properties that we can uh, lean on in order to uh, delineate and differentiate our file information. When it comes to properties inside of the Vault, I'm going to demonstrate something real quick here. If I go back over to Autodesk Vault, Whenever I select on a file here, and I'm looking at this particular file and I see the property information on the right-hand side, um, all the system information and even the custom information, all of these values for the properties are being set, for the most part, inside of the authoring tool itself. So in this case, Autodesk Inventor, it could be AutoCAD, it could be Word, it could be Excel, it could be a PDF, whatever your file is. That property information is basically being built out within that file itself. And then when you take that file and you upload it to Vault or you check it into Vault, what's happening is as it goes through that check-in process, there's different mechanisms within Vault that are interrogating that file um, uh, and looking for these properties and the values associated with these properties. So that way it can index and populate those values inside of the vault databases. And that's why you're seeing the information here on the right-hand side. So when I go to my PowerPoint here and I'm, and I'm referencing this bi-directional bi bi population, what I mean is that when we create information inside an inventor, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, P, uh, uh, PDF, whatever the case, and we 
create that file and we check it into Vault, we're now telling Vault what those property values should be. Okay, so that's unidirectional, going from the, the authoring tool to Vault, populating the information in the databases. There's also ways for us to be able to go in Vault and um, if I want to edit a property, I can edit a property here, um, make my property change, hit OK, and what it's going to do is it's going to then write that information from the Vault database and push that value down to the inventor file. So as opposed to going from the file to Vault, it's going from Vault down to the file. So property information, property capability here inside of the vault um, is bi-directional. What this means for us is if by chance, we happen to uh, create a bunch of files, check them into the vault, we're looking through the property panel and we recognize that there's a problem. Maybe we misspelled something. Maybe we put the wrong value in that property. Whatever the case might be, we don't have to necessarily check that file out make a property value change and then check that file back in in order to rectify that situation. We can use the functionality inside of the vault to make those corrections. And then the next time somebody uses that file or checks it out, um, it's going to reflect appropriately based upon the changes that we made here within the vault environment. So this is important to understand that you don't necessarily have to do everything within the authoring tool itself. You can make property value changes in the authoring tool or in Vault. It's really up to you how you want to do it. We already touched on the fact that, you know, there's system properties inside of the Vault as well as custom or user-defined properties. So you can have as many or as few properties as you need. Um, just understand that, you know, you're not, you don't have to be restricted by those properties that come out of the box when you implement Vault. You can create as many properties as you want. And the value of creating these properties is, once again, to, to apply these characteristics to your files. So you don't have to rely solely on file names in order to identify and file, find the information in which you need. And this lends itself to better searching capabilities, which we're about to talk about and, and go into here a little bit more thoroughly, but also reporting. So inside of Vault, we have a way to be able to report information out. By having a good subset of properties, and then of course populating those properties, because really without having a value of those properties, you're not doing yourself any service. Not only having the properties, but actually populating those properties allows you to search for information better. And then of course, get some feedback of the state of your vault or a state of a project or a state of um, usability or, 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 or people that are accessing Vault or all, all sorts of different um, activities that are actually going on inside of the Vault, you have means to be able to report some of that information out. So you can understand more about, like I said before, the state of your Vault, okay? So going back over here to my PowerPoint real quick, one of the last, um, one of the last um, um, slides that we wanna look at is the actual searching. How do you search inside of the vault? What are some different tips or techniques that we can use when trying to find information inside of the vault? So we can do folder level searching. We can do a very rudimentary or basic search where we're just looking for information based upon a file name. Uh, we can do advanced searches where we can create all sorts of search criteria so we can really focus where we want to search and explicitly what we're searching for. And we also have the capability of if we have to do common searches repetitively or we have to do them over and over again, we can save searches so that way we don't have to build out that search criteria every time we want to run a search. So a lot of benefits and a lot of capabilities here within the search capability inside of Vault. So let's go back over to Vault real quick. And then a couple of things that I really wanna kind of outline is, if you go into um, your folder architecture here on the left-hand side and you start drilling down and you select on different folders, up here on my center window, upper center window pane here, I have the capability of being able to search. I have a search bar here and this is very common, right? Um, a lot of different tools, web tools, websites, uh, browsers that you interface with, 
you know, a lot of them in the upper right hand corner or somewhere on that side, you'll find a bar where you can type some information. in. So we should all be very familiar with being able to type in some information as to I'm looking for an IPT, a .IPT, and then being able to run that search and then getting a return. So when it comes to this method where I'm using my folder structure here on the left-hand side, I've identified a folder, maybe there's a thousand files in there and I want to search within that folder. I can do a very, uh, a, I can target a specific folder that I want to search in for very specific information, okay? So I have that capability. I also have the ability to be able to expand this open. So this little button here, this double chevron button here, I can click that and I can expand that open which now exposes more functionality for me able to for me to be able to search explicitly within that folder that I've identified. So once again, this is folder level searching. If I have multiple properties I want to search against, if I want to look specifically in the comment property or the file name property or the author property, or maybe there's other properties I want to search in. So I can click this add criteria button and say I want to look for the designer. Well, by selecting that, now the designer property field is opened up for me to be able to put some information in there. I can uh, fill in some information and hit search. I can clear my fields. I have different options here if I want to search the file content um, or just, the, just within the subfolders itself or in this folder only and not subfolders. I can uncheck search subfolders, okay? So I have a lot of functionality here just by perusing through my folder architecture and then using my search bar up here on the right-hand side, okay? Or I can minimize this and just use that criteria right there, okay? So some search capability just from targeted, you know, folder level searching. Um, some other things that I can do from selecting on folders and different items within my upper center window pane here is if I right click on a file, if I identify a file and I right click, I'm going to get this context menu here. And I can do things like, say, um, create shortcut. By hovering over create shortcut here, I can add this to my shortcuts panel or I can create this as a distributed shortcut. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But basically, by creating a shortcut, what happens is over here on the left-hand side, under my Save Shortcuts, I've now created a link uh, for, um, here in my shortcuts to this particular file specifically. So what does this do for me? How does this benefit me? Well, say, for instance, I first fire up Vault. Say, for instance, those shortcuts you know, drill down through an extensive folder architecture. You know, I could be a huge manufacturing company with hundreds of folders, hundreds or even thousands of subfolders, you know, being able to remember where everything is at, quite a bit of a challenge, right? So by creating shortcuts, even though my folder architecture, or my folder um, uh, hierarchy here on the left-hand side might be collapsed, I can select this shortcut button. It's gonna expand open my folders, take me right to the file, Give me my detailed information about that particular file, and I don't have to worry about where everything is stored at. Okay. So this is super, super helpful, particularly if you're like working on a longer term project and you have to revisit files on a regular basis, day after day after day. You may be in a company where you have a, um, a file check in policy where at the end of every day, whatever files you have checked out, you might have to check them in. That way they're not local on your in your local workspace, but they're inside of the vault. Tomorrow you come back to work, now you gotta get all that information back out. Having some of these shortcuts available will facilitate that process and make sure that once again, you're getting to the information you need when you need it with a high level of confidence that it's accurate, okay? So shortcuts, very powerful. If you don't want that shortcut anymore, no problem. Just right click on it, select delete, and now that shortcut goes away. So a very dynamic area where you can add and remove different shortcuts as your project responsibilities change throughout the course of your day, throughout the course of your week, whatever the case might be, okay? So shortcuts, super helpful in that regard. Um, so getting on to now some of the actual search capabilities so we can search for through our bar, we can identify files and create different shortcuts. And, but now we want to be able to do something a little bit more extensive or a little bit more powerful. 
Up here on our toolbar, we have this find button, okay? I can, I can get to my find button by selecting that button right there. It's gonna open up this other dialog box. I can get to my find button um, from opening up my window panel here and selecting, um, uh, it's actually under, oh, under options, I can select find here. It's gonna open up this dialog box. So what I'm getting at is there's a number of different ways that we can get to, um, let's see if I can right click on here. Is there a find in here? Sometimes there is, kind of depends. What I'm getting at is there's a number of ways you can get to that find dialog box, okay? Um, once you open up the find dialog box here, you have a couple different things. You got some pull down menus here that I can select on and I'm gonna get some different options. I have a toolbar here that allows me to do a few things. But what we're gonna be focusing on primarily is this, this area down here, okay? So there's essentially two types of searches that we can do, well, there's basically three types of searches that we can do here from this find dialog box, okay? So one thing that I wanna identify first and foremost is the find dialog box, you're gonna see here that I can minimize this or I can maximize this. So what I'm saying is that you don't have to do a find and then close that out and do something else and then come back and do a find. You can leave that find dialog box open all the time if you wanted to. You don't have to close that. So if you're constantly doing a lot of searches, you're trying to find a lot of information on a regular basis, you don't have to close that find dialog. Just minimize that guy and then pop it open whenever you need it, okay? So I have my find dialog box, the three different types of searches that we can do. The first one is a basic search. So if I select basic here, um, it's going to give me the opportunity to then be able to put in some search text and say I want to find bearing. I'm just going to type in bearing and I'm going to say find now and it's going to look in this location. So this is my upper level um, uh, folder location. It's going to look through my vault and find anything that has bearing in the file name or I believe in like the description. Okay, so it only looks in those two fields right there. So if it finds any returns, it's gonna show me my returns. Once I get my returns here, I can do a couple of things. I can right click. It's gonna give me my context menu where I can open this file. Maybe I need to check this file out. Maybe I need to purge something or rename it. So I get all sorts of capability here from doing my search, getting a return, and then being able to do something with that, that information, okay? So that's a, a, a basic search. If I happen to know some really rudimentary criteria around what I'm looking for, basic search works just fine. It's really no different than using the search here, but once again, this is targeting this specific folder, whereas the find tool gives me an opportunity to look for any folder or files or items, change orders, and I can browse out to very specific locations. So if I want to target this folder or this folder, or if I want to uncheck and I want to check numerous folders, I can look very in, in very specific locations in my vault. I don't have to look through the entire vault in order to find that information, okay? So I have a means to look for very specific information in very specific locations um, using very specific properties, okay? So the basic search, I can look through files in a, in, in a location. Advanced search allows me to then do the same thing, but then I can start building out criteria. So what this means is if I wanna look for say a file that has a file extension contains .ipt, I'm gonna add that criteria. And I want to say um, it's uh, the author is contains administrator. Okay. So I'm going to add these two criteria and then I'm going to say fine now. And now it's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to look for any files that have the file extension of IPT and the author property value contains administrator. So when I did that search, it didn't return anything, which means 
you know, obviously something's not right with my criteria or nothing meets that criteria. And that's why I didn't get a return there. So I can remove some of this criteria if I'd like to. Let's say um, author contains, how about, um, what if I use a wildcard character? So I'm going to use a star here. And I'm going to say FIT, because that's part of my last name. I'm going to add that. And now let's do a find. Oh, still no, no, nothing to be found there. So let's remove that. Let's just do a find here with this. So we got a return. That's the whole point of it is the fact that we can add criteria. Uh, we can replace criteria and we can remove criteria. So we have an opportunity to build out all sorts of criteria so we can look for very specific information in a very specific locations, okay? Once again, once I get a return, I can right click, I get an opportunity to do something with that information. I can also, remember what I was talking about before, guys? I can also run a report, right? So this is one of those areas inside of the vault where I can run a report. Once again, what this is gonna do is it's gonna report out basically whatever this search criteria got me. So uh, maybe we'll do another KVA uh, on reporting at some other at some other time, okay? Um, anyway, um, in my research return here, um, I have 1,038 returns. Uh, right now it's only showing me 100 of those 1,038. I can hit this button and it's gonna show me more and more and more. And down here now it's telling me how many of these objects I'm actually viewing. So a lot of capability here in terms of being able to use your search criteria um, for different properties. The different conditions we can use, we can use contains, does not contained, is, is not. Um, if it's something like, say, a date. So if we use anything where there might be a date involved, like um, checked out in, checked in, checked out by, checked in is, so if you notice, when you use a date type of property, you get different conditions like is, on, or before, yesterday, today. So you get different conditions to be able to refine your criteria. So once again, you can target and search for very specific information, okay? So very, very powerful in terms of your basic search, your advanced search. These options right here kind of refine what we wanna do in terms of our searching. Do we want to only look for the latest versions or do we want to look through all the versions? Do we want to search through the subfolders or just in the folders that I've identified up here? And do I want to save this as a folder? So what this means is if I do an advanced search, if I build out this criteria, I have this opportunity to save this current search. So let's do that. Let's do, let's do um, file extension. We'll do file extension contains dot IPT dot IPT. And I'm going to add that. So this is my search criteria. And now I'm going to hit this save here. And I'm going to get this other dialog box. It's going to say, okay, uh, find uh, IPT. So I'm going to save this search as find IPT. Here's my search criteria. Here's my location. It's an advanced search. And I'm going to be looking for files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this criteria out. And right now I'm going to use the default save as folder and hit OK. And I'm going to show you what this does. So I'm going to close this now. So what happens is once I save that search over here on the left hand side by my folder architecture, I have this folder called save search folders. So you're going to notice that once I expand that open, find IPT, which is the save search that I just saved, is now available and visible to me. And what I can do is if I click on that guy, it's actually going to run that search. So it's going to run that search. It's going to give me a return right here within the context menu and the dialogues and the window panes of a vault here as opposed to opening up a separate pane. I still get the same number of returns, 1,038 based upon that search. Um, and now I don't have to recreate that criteria. I can save that and I can run that search whenever I need to. A very popular search that I see a lot of customers uh, running is um, checked out by. So checked out by contains your username. So in this case, my username is administrator. 
So you can say ch checked out by contains, add that, create that as a save search. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna say checked out by me and I'm gonna save that search. So now, anytime I wanna run a search and find out what files I have checked out, I can run this checked out by me. It's gonna show I have 197 files checked out. It's gonna show me all these checked out files. And then I can do something like this where I can do a mass selection, right click and say check in and I can check in all my files. I could do something like that, okay? So having these saved searches to rapidly generate these searches, once again, going to help you guys be able to find the information you need with the high level of confidence that it's accurate. So one of the last things I want to talk about here is you'll notice that below my saved searches here, I have this other folder called distributed searches. Distributed searches. This is a relatively new feature inside of Vault where when I go and I create... So once again, let me go into my find tool here. I'm going to search for something. I'm going to build out some criteria. I'm going to say um, checked out by, and I don't have any other users in my vault, so that's not going to work very well. How about if we do created by? I'm going to do created by, CR created by, contains, um, I'm going to use a wildcard here, so star admin, okay? I'm going to add that, and I'm going to save this search, okay? So the difference here is, as opposed to saving as a folder or in conjunction with save as a folder, I can check this box, say save as distributed search, and then I can hit OK. Um, oh, i got to give it, give it a search name. Um, I'm going to say created by admin or something to that effect. I'm going to say OK. And now I have this search saved. You're going to notice it's going to be in this distributed searches. And then I can run that and it's going to give me my returns. Now, what is the value of this? How does this help me? Distributed searches um, are different because they can be created by administrators. I'm an administrator in my vault. I can create these from an administrative perspective, and they're going to be visible to everybody else that is connected to my vault. So all my users will now be able to see this search. So as opposed to previously creating a saved search, going into Windows Explorer, trying to find where that search is saved at, and then emailing it. Um, to everybody else, and then they got to put it in that location, and now they have the same save, save search. Now we have distributed searches where admins can go and create a whole bunch of searches and distribute those out to their users so the users don't have to recreate those save searches themselves. So from an administrative perspective, maybe you have hundreds of uh, vault users as opposed to relying upon them to create save searches. You can create your own save searches and push those out to the users facilitating their search capabilities. So very powerful capabilities in terms of being able to find information inside of the vault, very specific targeted information using my search capabilities and my find capabilities, my save search capabilities, my shortcut capabilities. Once again, to be able to get to that information to make educated and informed decisions about our business, right? So very important to understand how to use those searching capabilities inside of the vault. All right. So with that being said, um, in summary, you know, think about how save searches kind of changes the way that we interact with our information. So I want you to think about how, now that you understand how searching allows us to find information in, you know, a vault of any size, it, try to reimagine what your folder architecture might look like. And what I mean by that is, if I know that I can find information based upon property values, not based upon where they're located at in a folder hierarchy, that really changes the way that I might want to structure my files, as opposed to having an assemblies, a components, a hardware, a purchase, a shapes subfolder, all these files could 
essentially exist in this folder right here. And then I could use property information to be able to delineate that. I could filter out anything other than IPTs or IAMs or PDFs within that folder. So I'm not even confused or distracted by all that other information. I can use my search capability to filter out that information in which I don't need or just to see the information in which I do need. So think about that for a moment, you know, not having to rely so heavily upon a deep folder architecture in order to satisfy my search and organization needs. Having a tool like the Find tool and a search capabilities inside of Vault allows you to reimagine your folder architecture, allows you to save a lot of time and removes that opportunity for creating duplication. Um, we have the capability of create very simple or complex common searches. We can save those, we can distribute those out to other users. So that way everybody has that capability of being able to find that information. And of course, lean on those properties. The more properties you have, really, it's not even about the, the number of properties you have, it's about how you're populating those properties. Come up with very, come up with a strategy of how do you populate those properties? What are the, what should the values be? How much latitude or flexibility should you give your user, users in terms of how they populate those, those property va values? Think about utilizing automation or other utilities to be able to facilitate that process. So that way, now you're even extending more consistency, more standardization within your property value information. Okay, so there's a lot of things that um, you can do here. And please, please remember, you don't have to do this on your own, guys. You know, we here at Kativ, we do this all the time. This is what we're very familiar with. We were exposed to a lot of different companies that are doing a lot of different ways. So we have that technical aptitude and that knowledge base to be able to impart upon you so that way you can be more successful in you know, using tools like Autodesk Vault to make your, your business a little bit more efficient, a little bit more optimized. So thank you everyone for joining today's KVM. Now I'm gonna open up for Q&A and really appreciate your time today. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. And now is an opportunity to ask any questions. I see that there is one question in the Q&A here and it says, maybe I missed it, is distributed search vault 2024, uh, uh, option only. And I do believe it is. I believe it's a it's a new uh, feature in Vault. It might be in 2023, but I know it's a relatively new feature added to Vault in terms of distributing those searches. Yes. And you are welcome, Brian. Nice to see you on the call. Any other questions about... Uh, the search capabilities within Vault Professional, um, anything relative to property, saving searches, things along those lines. Leave it open here for another minute. Eric indicates that he doesn't see it in Vault 2023. There you go. There's the answer. Real time, everyone. It's a Vault 2024 feature. Um, so here's more of a reason to, um, you know, make sure that you guys are upgrading on a regular basis. Obviously, it's a challenge uh, to do it every single release, you know, Autodesk on an annual release.